Hello everybody, I am Bolt Matrix, and today we're taking a look at Rhinox. This is Transformers Studio Series Rhinox from Rise of the Beasts. This is the new mold that was introduced in the Studio Series, not the weird different mold that was in another subline. It, it, this is getting, this is just getting weird. Rise of the Beasts is just getting weird. What is also weird is this figure, because this figure is missing a crap ton of paint. In the Hasbro photo shoot model, a lot of this figure is in this copper color. Or I should say a lot more of this figure is in that copper color. This figure is predominantly this weird gray. This Rhinox figure is gray and silver. There's, there's no getting around that. The copper is very nice, but there needs to be more of it. There needs to be a lot more of it. But I can't argue with the way the figure is textured. The molding and the texture on the body is absolutely fantastic. And when you pick it up, you feel that texture. It feels leathery, even though it's obviously plastic. There is a storage spot for his weapon on his back, and that's the only place you're going to be able to store that weapon other than him carrying it in his hands. It's just, it's such an odd figure. Unfortunately, he is the third of the Boring Gray Boys Band. And that's with Catbot and Monkeybot. Okay, there is a little bit more to gr than gray on Cheetor than there is on Primal, but you get what I'm saying. The gray is just throughout this whole line. It's, it's really weird. Rhinox's head sculpt is absolutely fantastic and feels like a perfect movie evolution to the character. It really does look like Rhinox. It's just a shame he had no speaking lines in the movie. Rhinox's posability is okay. His head moves on a swivel, though good luck getting it to move. The amount of force that I need to use in order to turn it either way is just ridiculous. Shoulders swivel around and then the shoulder pads open up and you can move the arm out. There is a bicep swivel that's pretty darn tight and there is an elbow that bends almost 90 degrees and the fists do articulate. Two very serious issues I have with this figure in terms of the arms are one, the shoulders keep coming on pegs so I have to lift or pull forward the chest and push the chest back in and get them back into place. And these damn shoulder pads pop off. Every time I pick up the figure and go to move it, I push, I end up pushing up on a shoulder pad and it just flies off somewhere. And I've lost it a couple of times behind my computer while I was first transforming this thing. Torso swivel is present, though it feels really weird because the legs are so spindly compared to the rest of the figure. Legs can move forward and can kick back and forward. They they could kick straight out. In fact, they could go farther than 90 degrees. There is an upper thigh swivel, though it is limited because of this giant chunky piece of rubber. And the knees bend a good bit, about 90 degrees, though it does feel like there's a double bend here. There really isn't. The knee collapses forward for the transformation. And the directions say that there are more joints in these shins, but there aren't. They're just a solid piece of plastic it feels like. And then the feet do rock forward and back and have ankle rockers that go on for days. In terms of size, we already saw the figure with his other Voyager class friends from the ROTB line, but let's take a look at him with Voyager class Armada Starscream, Voyager class Studio Series 86 Ironhide, Voyager class Titans Return Blitzwing, Voyager class Battle Trap, and Voyager class Dinobot. And then we've got Kingdom Optimus Primal and Kingdom Rhino. Now, having the two Rhinox figures right next to each other, you can really see the differences and the similarities as well. Their head sculpts are definitely similar. I just wish the movie versions or the studio series versions had some more detail in it because that way you could see the similarities as opposed to, oh yeah, that, that amorphous gray blob kind of looks like Rhinox. Now, before we get to the transformation, I made note of this earlier, but I am just absolutely blown away by the amount of texture that they've gotten into this figure. I mean, look at those forearms. They just ooze detail and molding. And there is some difference in the paint there. And the chest just 
it looks hollow, but at the same time isn't. And then the thighs are super well detailed. There's a lot of components that I'm pretty sure is just one piece of plastic or maybe two, but it looks really good. And then the hollowness or the hollow look of the shins and the lower legs works incredibly well for me. And then there's detailing on the inside when the light catches it. It's really well designed. It's just a shame that it's all the same color practically because you kind of lose some of the detailing. Rhinox's transformation is very classic Rhinox. The top part of the figure is going to form the top front part of the Rhino, and then the legs will form the back part of the Rhino. It's very, very similar to Cheetor. In fact, that's the way all Rhinox figures have been, but this one has a couple of tricks that are fun. All right, let's get into it. First off, we're going to come to the forearms and open up the inside of the forearms. Again, super well detailed, but I have a problem where every time I try to open the panel, the damn part falls off or comes off. So turn the fist and then flip out the rhino foot and snap all of that back on. And no, I'm not pulling too hard. I'm just kind of pushing and they just pop off. I I'm really not trying to, you know, murder him. Turn the fist around and then close that. Oh, I got the fist turned incorrectly. And there we go, got that done. And then take the arms, point them straight, and turn them so that the bits are pointing in the right direction. And see, there we go. As Soon as I start moving around, I pop off one of the shoulder pads. Let me know down in the comments if, if you have this figure and have this issue where the shoulder pads just keep falling off. Now come up to the chest, grab the chest, and unpeg it from the... <sighs> That's another part that comes off constantly, is the chest piece. I don't know what it is about the plastic on this figure, but it just keeps snapping apart. And I think that's also my fault, because what you have to do first is come in and open up the belly. Butterfly the belly, like that. And then grab the chest, pull it out, and then bring it all the way down like that. Bring the actual chest piece that I keep ripping off, fold that down. Bring those butterflied sections in and snap them into place inside the belly and then fold the chest component up like that. We can then come to the back and open up the back like so. Grab the rhino head and flip it all the way up. These little horns that are coming off the back will fold into the body. Come up to the rhino head and pull the front of the rhino head off and that'll flip up the horn, or allow you to flip up the horn, and close the rhino head, and come under to this section here and flip this out and bring it out all the way. And then this whole section will close up and then will fold over Rhinox's head and will snap in to those areas on either side of the head like that. One word of warning when transforming the figure back into rhino mode. There is a channel in here. It's a hollow channel that the horn needs to fold up into. You could see it better there. I'll get a little light in there. If you don't get the horn to line up and go into that channel, you will not be able to fold up the back correctly. So just fair warning. Come to the front and the shoulders, and you see how the shoulders are now floating? We will fold them, push them down into this channel and peg right there and those will snap into place and don't worry if you don't get it the first time it just you'll get it eventually just trust me okay now what do we do about the back well <laughs> this is super easy first take the legs straighten them out and then take the front skirt and it will peg into those two slots there just snap that into place, grab the leg at the knee, and push the upper thigh in like that, and then that will push in. So there's the hinge. It will push in and go in and up like that, and then take this panel that's on the back, unpeg it, fold it down, and it will peg into these little pegs that are coming off the back of the thighs. Peg that in, and we're done. That's the Rhino mode. You know what? I've got to admit, this thing is imposing in Rhino mode. It looks great. It's just, it, it looks like a walking tank. It does. It's really cool. 
I like this alt mode quite a bit. And I think this is the best Rhinox figure we've ever had. Can you do a lot with it in alt mode? Not really, no. But it looks cool. And I have to admit, it looks a hell of a lot better than what we ended up with in Kingdom. Even though I really do like this Rhinox figure, and I do, I really wish it wasn't silver and copper. I wish it was copper and green, or that deep, dark green that he was in the movie, because maybe I was watching that movie with a night filter on on my computer, but to me, he was green, or at least a dark, foresty kind of green, as opposed to this silver. That could just be me. I, again, I would really like it to be green and copper. That would have been really cool. But no, we ended up with more silver. But I can't argue with the way he looks with the other two Maximals. Definitely oozes Rise of the Beast energy, which is really, really nice. And thankfully, in toy form, Primal can ride Rhinox with no problem. As I said, I like this figure quite a bit. I think it's a ton of fun. It's really cool. Just wish some of the weird issues that I've run into were fixed or weren't present. And I, I, I wish it was a different color. I just do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I keep harping on that. But that's me. I think it should have been more of a, of a green and brown color, the green and copper, than silver. I'm not going to lie, transformation to and from alt mode is a little bit finicky. It's not awful, but it it is finicky. And you do have to be wary of a couple of things, especially the throat <laughs> thing that I mentioned earlier, which I'm going to do now. See, when you have the head opened up like this, you absolutely have to make sure that the horn, which is a very soft plastic, folds into it and down. Otherwise, it won't be able to fold into the figure's back and you won't be able to close up the back. Ask me how I know that. I screwed up the transformation several times uh, before getting this review done. You see, if, see how it folded up like that? If you have the horn not in that channel and somehow goes back down to the mouth, you won't be able to bring the head all the way back and you won't be able to close up the back either. Pull the shoulders out. Fold the back up. There we go. Fold the chest forward. Unpeg the abdomen. Fold the chest up. And actually get these shoulders in line so that when you close the chest, it pegs the shoulders in place. Close the tummy. And then open up the arms and pop the panel off again. And we'll be done in just a second. Overall, Rhinox is a very cool toy. Just wish it was a different color scheme. That's my biggest thing. I know I keep harping on it, but I really wish there was more color. And my good buddy Grimlockamus has already said that at the next TFCon, he's going to have a bunch of these repainted. So I'm really curious what they're going to look like. So folks, I picked this figure up over at the Hasbro Pulse. I think it's a good figure. It's definitely worth owning. Thank you so much for watching. I have been Bolt Matrix. Please let me know what you think of Rhinox down in the comments. I will catch you all next time.